Okay, so the math dealer here, and today I'm going to find out how to make a function continuous at every point x. Whew, it took a lot to get out. Okay, so here we go. I am trying to solve for a and b. Whenever you're trying to solve for two variables, you're usually trying to set up a system of equations. And that takes you back to your Algebra 1 days, right? Where you have the system of equations, you either use substitution or maybe you use elimination to solve one of those things. Oh, wait. I actually have a video on that. I know, right? You might want to go play that. Okay, so here we go. So now I am going to sit there and say, okay, in order for something to be continuous, the left-hand limit has to equal the right-hand limit. So I have some key points here. So I'm going to set up my equation using these pivotal points. So the first one I'm going to look at as I approach 3, negative 3, from the left-hand side, that's going to have to equal the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right-hand side. So you say, okay, well, if I'm going to 3 from the left-hand side, I get negative 2 because that's what that number is. If I'm going to negative 3 from the right-hand side, I'm going to plug negative 3 in for x, and I'm going to get a negative 3a minus b. That's one equation, but like I said, a system of equation usually requires two or more, okay? So now I'm going to use the one as my pivotal point. So I say, okay, well, let's see what happens with one. In order for it to be continuous, remember, the left has to equal the right. And I know I didn't write f of x, but you know where I'm going with this stuff, craziness, right? Okay, so I go to one from the left-hand side, and uh, now I'm going to put one in for that x. So that gives me a minus b. One from the right-hand side gives me four. Now, look at what we got. We have two equations and two unknowns. And in the world of math, we live for that. So now I am going to solve this system of equations. And look at how I'm going to write this. I am literally going to write it as if we were back in our Algebra 1 days. Oh, my gosh, right? So I'm going to sit here and multiply through. Maybe by a negative one, a little distributive action. You've seen pictures. Like I've always said, if math was a movie, it would be an action film. Anyway, so I get a minus b is equal to 4. And now when I go ahead and combine, going down, right, the b's cancel for a little while. Gives me 4a is equal to 6. So a is 3 halves. Well, that's just fine and dandy. But remember, we're trying to solve for a and b. Well, slide back into one of these equations. Plug in what you know and figure out what your b is. So I'm going to plug in a is 3 halves, remember, minus b equals 4. I'm going to subtract 3 halves. And oh, by the way, yes, we're living in the fraction world. So you go 4 minus 3 halves. If you want to call that 8 halves, you can. 8 halves minus 3 halves is known to be 5 halves. And of course, b would therefore be negative 5 halves. All right, so guess what we just found? We found our a to be 3 halves. We found our b to be negative 5 halves. So as long, it's a little rough, as long as a and b are those values, then you've got yourself your answer. Sound good? That You got yourself your answer. What I mean to say is you have a continuous function. Woo! It's been a crazy morning, crazy morning. All right. Well, this is the math dealer. I hope this was helpful. Signing off. Arrivederci.